Welcome back, wrestling fans, marks, marks, bookers, workers, refs, announcers, timekeepers, valets, managers, and of course, you always have to give love to the boys and girls on the ring crew. Uh, I'm Matt Wallace, and joining me for the first time on my wrestling channel is my lovely, brilliant wife, Nikki. Hi, everyone. Nikki is like my wrestling manager, but in life. So I wrote the speech then? She wrote, no, the managers don't write the script. The shitty TV writers write the script. Uh... If they still had managers, it would actually be much better. Managers, yeah. So anyway, so here's the deal. Today we are going to be unboxing the 2017 October. This is November, but this was late. But it is the October Slam Crate from Loot Crate. And before we get to it, I'm going to start off by prefacing this little bit of a disclaimer. I'm going to claim a not insignificant amount of hypocrisy on this one because, as Nikki knows, because she hears it more than any of you do... I talk a tremendous amount of shit about WWE and Loot Crate. I'm not a particular fan of either one. However, since I started doing unboxings on this channel and on my other channel, Angry Writer, everyone on Twitter and everyone I know has wanted me to do a Slam Crate. Mostly because I think they want me to lose it and rant angrily about WWE and, and Loot Crate. People enjoy it when I go off. And because content is king and audience drives content, I decided I'm just going to suck it up, and we have a slam crate here that we're going to unbox. And I'll just, because I don't like giving money to WW or Loot Crate, I'll like donate a commiserate amount of money to like the ACLU or something like that to like cleanse my conscience. So I'm acknowledging I'm a hypocrite right off. However, today we are going to unbox the 2017 October Loot Crate. Um, this is a, bi not bi-monthly, because that would mean twice monthly. Right. It comes every other month. Every other month. Yeah, every other month. You're, you're laughing because I said it comes every other month. Yeah. Actually, yes. Unlike me, it's, that's by like daily. Anyway, it comes every other month. It is, I believe, $32.99 plus shipping and handling. If you're interested in getting this, I don't know why you would be, but if you are, I will put all the pricing details in the description below. But without further ado, here is Matt F. and Wallace with Nikki, and we are going to unbox the, uh, the Slam Cream. I'm a little scared. I am too. Once you cut the tape and you open the box, this is what you're gonna see. Ooh. Oh, the t-shirt looks cute. How does it look? It looks cute. Oh, I, I see Alexa Bliss. I see Alexa Bliss, yeah. So yeah, so right away I see the t-shirt. We will save the t-shirt for last because that'll probably be the coolest thing in the box. This month's uh, theme was Attitude, although on the website they made it clear, not the Attitude Era. Just attitude is a concept. Okay, I think that's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. That's the problem. And we'll get this. In, we'll get into it in a second. So it's attitude, but not necessarily the attitude era. Which right away, I don't even know what you're doing with yourself. So the first item we're gonna pull out, it is a collectible, not a toy. It makes it clear on the box. And this is the rock. And, he, and, I, and, I, and the thing is, after I get done saying it's not the Attitude Era, this is the Attitude Era rock. Yeah, I was going to say, wait a minute, that um, looks like so, um, it's the rock in, of yeah. my childhood. It is the rock of our of all our childhood. And the rock was the rock of our childhood. It kind of looks like him. Kind so, yeah. Him. So it kind of looks like him. Loot Crate, in general, has been doing these styles of figures. I've, I've like seen them in their sports boxes. Okay. So they'll do this style... Of, um, I'm not gonna keep this, so I'm not gonna open it. I'm sorry, I know everybody wants to see it, but like this is this is what the figure. Why wouldn't you look. open it and just put it back in the box? Nobody cares. Because it has tape on it, and if I want to give it to somebody, I want it to be new. Okay. But yeah, but we've I've seen these before. The one they did of the Undertaker was actually pretty cool. Um, this one does not look as like that doesn't look like the, the Rock to me. Does that look like the Rock to you? No. And like I think I had read some stuff about this. This also doesn't like bend or have a movable. Yeah, mask. they don't really move it just, around. Like, twists it just twists. It's meant to be. It comes so it comes with a little corner of the ring that you stand it in, and then so this is the. It says right here that's the fourth one in the first series of these because they're going to keep doing these. I think the one for the next crate I've already seen on the website is like Sasha Banks. So they're starting a new series of these, and I'm not a huge fan of that. For the simple reason that it just, like, you kind of, in a way, you kind of know what you're getting every month. Yeah. Like, when they started doing the Slam Crate, they did that really cool, um, unit, the, New Day yeah. the unit, New Day Riding the Unicorn vinyl figure. And I thought that was actually really neat. I liked that. I wanted one of those. And then they were doing, like, um, metal variants and stuff. But just, like, knowing you're going to get one of these every month, especially if you don't like this figure, then you just kind of screw it on the box because you know they're always going to do one of these figures. So I'm not a huge fan of that. But this is The Rock... They did Stone Cold, they did Triple H, they did The Undertaker. Again, The Undertaker was pretty cool. 
At least it's a cool like wrestler. It's, it's the rock rounding out the set. Some of the ones that actually can't wrestle, it's a real it, thing that can work. I mean, I that's um, kind of nice. I guess that is kind of nice. So our next item is a lunch bag. And this is an Enzo Amore item because who doesn't love Enzo Amore? Me. Uh, Nikki does not like Enzo Amore. I don't like Enzo Amore either. So this is made to look like a crumpled up. So it says, this lunch belongs to a certified G. Are you serious? Uh, and you can't teach that uh, because cultural appropriation. Oh my God. So it's made to look like a crumpled up lunch bag, but it's actually an insulated uh, lunch bag inside. And it comes with a... Uh, how you doing cold pack that you can put in with the lunch. And I just can't imagine the soul who would want to have this in your office lunchroom in the refrigerator and have everybody judge you on this basis. Because if they're not a wrestling fan, they're just going to think you're a giant penis. Yeah. And if they are a wrestling fan, they're still going to think, think you're, you're a, a giant, giant penis. penis. Like, you're really screwing yourself either way. And it, I don't know how reusable this would be because... Um, it is like insulated on the inside. I know he didn't open it for you, but the outside packaging looks like a little cheap. I mean, it's not. I don't I, know how reusable I, that really is going to be. I doubt they put a lot of production into it. It is supposed to be reusable, but it does look pretty cheap. I mean, the cold pack. The ice pack's cool. Yeah, the ice pack's kind of cool. You could use that. And I guess how you doing is it as bad? If you as, got an ache in a really inappropriate yeah. area, at least you'd feel good about it because you're like Enzo Amore. <laughs> <laughs> Enzo Amore is, is cooling my crotch. That's as right. Speak. But. Uh, yeah, uh, Enzo. Enzo exemplifies. So again, so we had Attitude Era Rock, and now we have Enzo, who is about as far away from the actual Attitude Era as you can get. He has Attitude, but every living creature on Earth has Attitude. This doesn't really mean anything. Enzo's interesting to me, and I'll tell you why really quickly. Enzo highlights two things that the WWE really sucks at. The first is not doing managers anymore. Kind of doing managers, but not doing managers anymore. They made that a policy, like, no more managers. We're gonna have everyone talk for themselves, even though 90% of the roster can't cut a promo to save their lives. But then they'll have a guy like Enzo talk for Big Cass, or they'll have Paul Heyman talk for Brock Lesnar, acknowledging that that works fantastic when you put a big guy who can't talk with somebody who can't talk, yeah. but then they won't do it in any other case. They like, it's, managers have become like special occasion only. It makes no sense. The other thing Enzo highlights is if you've seen him in the cruiserweight division, this is like the fourth decade of WWE having no idea how to book junior heavyweights. It's like one of the staples of WWE is anytime they try to do cruiserweights or junior heavyweights, it goes tits up like immediately. Like if you look at any era in history. So Enzo is just, he's a good flashpoint for several things that WWE does wrong. Uh, the next item in the bag, we have a set of championship coasters. Mm -hmm. So these are coasters made to look like the uh, the plates of the championship belt. The thing is, I absolutely would open these, but I've seen it, and the th they're just the modern era belts. And the problem with the modern era belts is they all look like that. It's just the color is different in the background. So this coaster is... Original. I know. Oh, this, original. Coaster, I, this coaster is basically one coaster in different colors. Let me see what they feel like. Do they? They're, they're the flimsy kind, like the rubbery kind. Okay, I wouldn't trust these on my nice furniture. I know you wouldn't dress those on your nice furniture. Like, they're all right, but I don't know. These look kind of cheap like the belt, <laughs> to be it's, honest with you. I mean, yeah, it's like, I, I, I appreciate the idea of coasters. I appreciate the idea and sub boxes of stuff you can use. It's a nice, useful product. Like, but again, if they were going to do Attitude, just commit to doing the Attitude. Like, if the, here's the thing. If these were the Attitude Era Championship belts, that would look awesome. which were all different, then I would open these and show you them, and it'd be worth it, and yeah. this would be really cool. But since they're just like... They're all the, since they've changed the belts to all be the same, it doesn't make any difference anymore. Which also branding wise makes no sense to me. It's like putting, it's like you have a Coke can and a Pepsi can, but they both say Coke. They just happen to be different colors. Right. There's no way to yeah. distinguish them. So it just makes no sense to me. So, but we have a set of, of coasters. And then uh, we also have our pin. The pin is one of the things that the Slam Crate actually does very well. This pin is very cool. So this is the pin for the month. It's the old school Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was Austin gonna say that's Stone Cold, no? Championship belt that he wore. That's cool. So that is Attitude Era, like the figure, but unlike the rest of the stuff in the it's box. It's like they couldn't figure out it's how like, to go yeah. all the way around. They're like, well, we don't want to spend enough time. We're just gonna do half. And half and half. It's like this is this is the problem with the WWE. Everything they do is muddled. Yeah. Everything they do is confused because it's like they forbid anyone to use the word wrestling. Yeah. On air, ever. That's like a company policy. Do not refer to this as wrestling, even though what they do is professional wrestling. 
Well, and the thing is, is like, I don't know if they're doing that to keep up the whole thing. Like old wrestling used to be where everyone used to think it was real before everyone K got in. Yeah, in on the joke. But their commentary and their writing is so bad. Like, it, it's like watching the worst soap opera I've ever seen. And that's, and that's the problem. In. That's the problem. This man thinks he's Jerry Bruckheimer. He thinks he's making movies, even though he's not. He's producing professional wrestling, but he refuses to admit it's professional wrestling. So everything comes out confused and muddled, like the theme of this it's box. Bad. It's half attitude era and half we have attitude. The other thing that also confused me about this. this is awesome but it did remind me like i remember when stone cold did this yeah like he won the championship and then he started wearing his own belt which right. was really cool like so this was the plate of it and then like it had snakeskin lining yeah but i swear to god they never referenced that he started doing that on air no because i think yeah he I just started doing it one day and nobody ever talked about it nobody has ever like what he swapped the championship you would think they would have made like an angle out of that or something this isn't even me being critical this is just always something that confused me and i remember this even back then you noticed he was carrying a different belt but nobody ever talked about it mm. like and with he was doing the whole angle where vince mcmahon was the enemy and he's anti-corporate you figure they could have done an angle where like oh my god he's desecrating the belt, the belt. He's wearing his own belt. He's a rebel. But they never mention this on air. I just always thought this was very odd. So cool. It does look really... This is a very cool pin. Really the, cool. the pins are like the best thing in the slam crate. They got, uh, like, they're on. nice backs too. Like, so they, they do. Stay they're really... really yeah. They're, like they're very well-made pins. Uh, so... It's heavy. The last thing. So this is also the spoiler card. We'll get to the second. Which brings us to the t-shirt. <clears throat> the t-shirt actually looks really so neat. Cute. It's so cute. So this is... Bam! That is your shirt. It is... Alexa Bliss, Pretty Little Miss, makes everything bliss. And it's got kind of the... Here, I'll, I'll even do her, like, pose with the belt, with the shirt. I like it. And here's the thing. You might expect me to talk shit about Alexa Bliss. I actually love Alexa Bliss. Yeah, she's she's cool. a, She is like a natural, old-school heel. Here, Nikki will model the shirt for you. Alexa Bliss is like an old... A an, an natural, old-school heel. Amazing talker, amazing personality, great athlete. I think she's gotten a lot better since her NXT days when they put her in a cheerleader uniform because that's like the least original thing you can possibly do with a woman as a professional wrestler. Okay. But she's come a long way. When she did the thing where she put her arm out of joint on the that pay-per-view. That was so crazy. Like, every, and everybody believed it too. I remember seeing that clip and I'm like, damn, for like one second, Alexa Bliss brought kayfabe back. That was an amazing yeah, moment. Cool. I love Alexa Bliss. I hate the way the women's division is portrayed on WWE TV. Not because they don't have amazing talent, but because all the writers can think to do is jam every woman they have on the roster into a single segment on their ridiculously long show. And all of them have to pull each other's hair. And all of them have to pull each other's Nikki's problem with the women's division. Oh, we, I have a big problem. And Alexa Bliss does exemplify this to an extent. Nikki thinks they dress her like a Bratz doll. Nikki takes issue with basically the, the infantilism of the women's yeah. division. I feel like they make the, all of the women seem very junior and very teen and very immature Which and is, they yeah. do it on purpose because they think that that kind of little girly naivety is somehow overly attractive to really skeevy disgusting Which is men. creepy. Which is a creepy. And you know the thing is you're not wrong. When you said that we were watching Raw one time when she pointed Bothered this out. Me. And not everyone. Like Nia Jax. There are no, exceptions. And that was, the, that yeah. was going to be my thing is I feel like people that dress like Alexa and I, I don't have anything against her personally. I think she is a really great worker. I think she's the majority. And then you see someone like Nia Jax, who they don't use at all because she looks like a real woman. She talks like a real woman. She's dressed in a more, I think, wrestling appropriate. Like Also I, just so awesome. I love yeah, Nia Jax. Her, her outfit, outfit is freaking, like, I saw yeah. her in that and I was like, hello, my beauty queen. What can I do for you today? Um, <laughs> her and Piper Niven, like, I'd leave you for them. They're hot as fuck. I wouldn't, I, I blame can't you even, any, I wouldn't blame you in either case. Can't even. But, like, I really respected that and I respected her outfit. And I feel like she's someone you could take seriously. And then you see someone like Alexa Bliss and the angle they use and the way they make the women talk to each other. And I was like... This sounds like they're in sixth grade and they're just trying to tear each other down. Yeah. You know, while making them look like sixth graders. And there's some skeevy dude like thinking that that's the best thing. And yeah. I just find that disgusting. As far as the women's division has come in WWE, and they've made good choices. Like the make them, May Young Classic was fantastic. Yeah. Dropping Divas. I still feel like they have a long way to go. Another thing I noticed is they very often refer to the women by their first names and refer to the men by their last names. Mm -hmm. That's what I noticed after you made that point when we were watching Raw. 
Because you were talking about how they were dressed and how they're infantilized, and I'm like, actually, yeah. Now that you think about it, they tend to call every all the women by their first names, but they always call the dudes by their last names. Yeah. That's just an interesting. But, but this is a really shirt. cool shirt. It's super I would, cute. I would totally wear the shirt. And Nikki, I wish I could steal this. It's too big for me, but it's really cute. Well, you know, I can wear it around the house. Yeah. And then the last thing in the box is the kind of the combination uh, spoiler card, and this is also a poster. Oh, is that the spoiler for her doll on the back? No, that's uh, no, that's the, oh no, yeah, that's the next. So the next crate is gonna have Sasha Banks, a uh, figure in the same style of the figures they've been doing. I think I said that earlier, yeah. But this fold, this also folds out into a poster, uh, and they have like a profile of Brie Zango and the inserts. But the poster for this month is uh, check oh, out. Oh, it's Brett! It's Brett! You sounded like the little kid in the old generations promo. I love it. When he's walking up the tunnel, Brett! I love him. No, that's I mean, yeah, you can't you can't clown on Bret Hart in the ring. You can say some stuff about him outside of the ring, but he was one of the greatest of all time. That's a cool poem. Again, that's like pre-attitude era Bret Hart. So again, just con confused as hell theme, but that's a really cool poster. This box has schizophrenia. It does have schizophrenia. So this is, but that's a cool poster. So yeah, so to recap very quickly, we had our Alexa Bliss t-shirt, which is very cool. We have our Rock uh, Slam figure. That's what they're called, the fourth in the series. We had our championship coaster set. We had our lunch bag and uh, cooling pack. And we had our really cool Stone Cold Steve Austin Attitude Era Championship pen. And also the inside of the box, they did like a cool Alexa. Alexa, Alexa cool listener. One. So that's your slam crate for no, uh, no, October 2017. So as you know, we rate boxes on three categories. Exclusive, no, I'm sorry, uh, curation. Mm -hmm. uh, the items chosen, how they represent the theme, how they relate to each other, how they represent what they're chosen to represent. Um, exclusivity, which is how exclusive are the items to the box? Is it just a bunch of crap you can go get at Hot Topic or whatever? And value, which is, is the box worth the money that you paid for it? <clears throat> so for curation, again... It's so all over It's the so place. all over the place. With like, here's the thing. Pick a feature. Pick a feature. Great. Pick a freaking feature and pick the right one. Pick the Attitude like, Era. Yeah, if you're going to do an Attitude Crate, just do the Attitude Era. WWE trades so heavily on nostalgia, and yet they refuse to just like go full out. Everybody loves it when old stars come back. Everybody loves that stuff. If you're gonna do an attitude box, do an attitude box full out because that's just disappointing. I'm gonna give them, so I'd have to give them like a four out of ten on the curation because this is really muddled. It's all over. Um, the exclusivity, they do all the items specifically for the box. Like the t-shirts are all supposed to be exclusive. So I, cute, yeah, that I mean these are exclusive, but again like. Exclusivity just isn't just about can you only get in the box. It's also like how how good of an exclusive item is it? And I, I'm just not a huge fan of these. Also, all of this stuff is going to end up on eBay because they do so many of these crates. The pins actually go for a lot on eBay. I like the pins. Uh, the pins are really cool. Exclusivity. I mean, I'll give them I'll give them a seven point five out of ten because it is all exclusive stuff. Absolutely. But it is also like you know an exclusive Enzo Amore lunch bag. So I don't know how good that is. Um, on value. Again, it's a, it's like a thirty-three dollar box. It's not bad. It's it's you get good value for the money if you're into the stuff. Like the stuff, the I mean, the t bucks. yeah, the t-shirt alone. I mean, they you know they up they upcharge everything, uh, all the official WWE merchandise. Um, I give them I give them an eight on value. Yeah. Just because for like a around a thirty dollar box, you do you do get good value yeah. for the stuff in it, especially if you're going to buy all this stuff independently. And you know, if you're into people like Enzo, I'm sure people are like really excited about. I that. I'm sure they're yeah. they're sad little people, but you know, congratulations if you were waiting if you were waiting for Slam Crate to highlight Enzo Amore, you finally you finally got your wish. Uh, my favorite thing in the box is easily the t-shirt. I really love the t-shirt. The pin is also awesome, but like I can wear the t-shirt more than I can like utilize the pin. My least favorite thing in the box. Oh, come on. Um, you know, I actually, I got to go with the coasters on that. Really? I know. Oh, is this it because is, the belts are so weak? It's because the belts are so weak, and this is just so uninspired. It's just a set of four coasters that all look the same except for the cover. Like, at least they were trying to do something here. Like, they made it look like a paper bag, even though it's a reusable bag. Like, there was some thought in there. I just think Enzo Amore is useless. Um, so, that was, so, my favorite thing would be the t-shirt. My least favorite thing would be the coasters. Nikki, if you disagree, or you want to... No, I would agree. I mean, I guess the coasters don't bother me as much because, like, I'm not a belt fanatic, like, the, the like, design of belt fanatic. Right. 
but I get like the, you know, it's kind of like those, we got co similar coasters from Disneyland for the Tiki Room and they're all the same. And I was like, why don't they have different designs? There's like a bunch of birds. Fair. So like I get, I get the idea of like why this isn't your favorite. Right. My favorite is the t-shirt. Yeah, like, t-shirts I really love cool. it. They do kill the, they kill the t-shirts most often they kill the pens. Yeah. If you're going to get a slam crate, I would do it for, for the t-shirt and the pen. pens. They're, those are the best things they're doing. Because they've done really good pens and really good shirts in the past. So that's that's like as fair an assessment as I can get. Donate these things to kids, people. Like Christmas is coming. If you got kids, I'm gonna give this to Katie, Katie or cousin Katie, because she's obsessed with the rock. So yeah. she'll probably like that. And everything else, I'll I'll do something with it. I'll make a giveaway box for, for at some point. But anyway, that's your 2017 October slam crate. I hope it lived up to the, your expectations. Everybody who wanted me to do a slam crate, I will not be getting the next one because I've already seen that the T-shirt is Roman Reigns, and I want nothing to do oh, with that. Oh no! I'm just not. I refuse to have that. I'm like a dad with porn in the 50s. Like I refuse to have it in my house. It he just, really is. Like when the box showed up, he's like, oh God, it's here. It was, here. yeah, it was a little, it felt, I felt dirty. I felt wrong. But I wanted to do it for all of you. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you, uh, thank you, Nikki, for being our guest on this, this very special unboxing. If you enjoyed seeing Nikki here, uh, we're doing unboxings on my Angry Rider channel. A while ago, she put makeup on my face. We, unbo we unboxed the glam bag. It was a lot of fun. Go check that out if that's something you're interested in. In the meantime, I'm Matt Wallace. and I'm Nikki Glowen Wallace. And we'll see you next time here on uh, the Matt F. and Wallace Wrestling Channel.